Let's move on to how does intelligent play in brand protection side of things. Tim, you touched upon this earlier on, but we'll give you the floor to elaborate a little bit. Yes, I, th I think I think those are the, the 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 two main things: is making sure that your your critical crown jewels are, are, are locked down. Um, as Zach touched on, you've got to make sure that that uh, that your SSLs are doing what they should do, and are and are, you've picked the appropriate um, standard of SSL for that particular domain name. That, in, that uh, making sure it's all locked down, making sure it's secure. Uh, and again, with um, website configuration, actually, is very important. Is making sure that your um, domains are doing something, um, and perhaps just, if nothing else, forwarding to the primary website. They're doing something. Or alternatively, if you've recovered a domain name through enforcement action, that that then perhaps points to a, an educational site telling people how to look out for for counterfeits and uh, or, or whatever it might be, whatever might be appropriate for that particular client. Uh, the gap analysis, as I touched on, that's really important, getting that sorted, making sure you don't have any major gaps in your portfolio. If there are gaps in your portfolio, then there will be people that will exploit that and use those, um, use those domains for phishing, business compromise emails, uh, just traffic theft all sorts of things. So yeah, it, it helps with that. And, and, and it's, it's often actually quite an overlooked part of the security piece is, is looking at your own portfolio, and making sure it's fit for purpose. There's often a, a concentration on looking for third party infringements, but you know, make sure your own house is in order as well. At the same time, that's really, really important. Um, just on um, the gap analysis and registration portfolio or um, policy, Tim, I just want to sort of ask your kind of guidance or, or your experience on that is how, so one of the things our customers struggle with from a right sizing point of view is, do I have the right domains registered or do I have too many domains registered? So how, what's the best way for a client to maybe balance increasing their registration versus putting in a good domain watch? How do they strike that balance between getting, you know, getting those things yeah. secure? Absolutely. So there's, the, you know, the, the, uh, one way of making sure that no one registers uh, domains relating to your brand is to register them all. Um, but with 240 country codes or thereabouts, uh, 1,200 new GTLDs and subdomains of those, then it becomes very, very expensive. And then you start to look at hyphenated variants, type of, you know, it, you end up with portfolios of thousands upon thousands upon thousands of domain names, which is, is, is just, you don't need it. It's, it's, it's mad. So there's a balance between making sure that you have the most obvious um, vectors for attack squared away, make sure those are part of your portfolio and that you're doing something with them. That's really important. But then, but you don't have to register everything. And for everything else, there is the you know uh, watching services for third party registrations and then you can take a view on whether enforcement is needed depending on what that third party domain is doing or whether it can just you can keep a watching brief on it and as always as i've already alluded to it's all about balance um it's it's making sure you've got that balance between registrations and enforcement versus just you know letting things letting things go. And um, I think intelligence is designed to, to help with that. And obviously our, our um, watching services, which are out with uh, this um, webinar, uh, are, are also a huge factor in that as well. Thank you. What I'm hearing is the best way to manage your portfolio is to have that balance, have the right names, and you have to monitor and what your brands are doing out there. I have a question for the panel. Does is there any size of a portfolio that intelligence is not suitable for? We've yet to find it. So we've run it on small portfolios of you know fifty to one hundred domain names, but we've run it on portfolios of tens of thousands of domain names, and it, there's no limit. It really scales very well across every single size of portfolio that I've come across, for sure. Thank you, panelists. What are your takeaways 
from today's session. Kate, over to you. So from my perspective, the thing that I think we need to think about is the, the money that you're investing in your portfolio, invest it well. Um, so that means using use intelligence to have a look at what domains work for you, what domains don't work for you, where can you save money on domains and where can you reinvest that maybe into security, more registry locks, uh, you know, better name servers, things like that. So that would be my takeaway is use intelligence to make sure that you're getting return on investment for your, for your domain portfolio. Tim, what are your wise words? I think wise words. I think with my with my brand protection hat on, I think uh, it's it's really important to make sure that your critical domains, those ones that run email and web servers and servers, uh, make sure that they're held in line with best practice, that they're really locked down and secure. That's really really important. Over to you, Zach. Uh, for me, intelligence, I feel like does a really good job of helping with managing where you can expect your uh, your services to be run for your sites and everything so you can avoid those fire drills and the issues that, you know, everybody will run it or ideally will not run into with intelligence anymore. But, you know, if you didn't use this, it would be a... Uh, a good way to start looking at uh, managing that. Thank you. Personally, my takeaways are going to be two things, registry logs and money DNS, and this is in relation to critical domain things. Why registry logs? Registry logs are quite important. They do mitigate against unauthorized changes, social engineering, thefts, and if you can get that lock, then you have peace of mind. Why money DNS, premium DNS? You want to have robust DNS on your critical domain names with all the cyber security, cyber issues we're having in the world currently. So you want to have DNS that gives you full DDoS mitigation, DNS that is resilient, 100% uptime. That's all. Thank you very much for joining us. And that's all from us today.